It has been 20 years of InDesign, so we're making a video sponsored by Adobe for the 20th anniversary of Adobe InDesign. Specifically, it's a minimalistic abstract poster that anyone can really do when they're starting out in design. It's a great way of understanding composition, gridding, and also just general balance. Adobe sponsored this video and I created one of the poster designs for the 20th anniversary celebrating 20 years of Adobe InDesign. And they also sent me a bunch of these pins or badges, whatever you want to call them. Those pins and badges are for you guys. I'm doing a giveaway of them. If you want to be a part of this, make sure you subscribe to the video, like, comment, and share on this video. And I will give you a chance to win one of, I think, 20 of these limited edition pins. All right, so first things first, you will need Adobe InDesign. If you don't have it, click the link down below and it will take you to Adobe where you can go and get Adobe InDesign. If you don't know what InDesign is, it's basically a publishing tool for Adobe. It allows you to create print media assets, such as posters, book covers. Yes, you can use Illustrator or Photoshop, but InDesign is really for publishing tools and creating different articles of media, saying that print media. So if you haven't seen the poster that I designed for Adobe, here it is up on the screen. This is the poster, and it was one that I did just to celebrate the idea of creativity and expressionism and abstractation. I'm gonna show you in this video how I made that, and you're gonna learn a lot of stuff. So go ahead and press create new and you'll get this document box up. We want to go to print and then go to A4. You can go to A3 if you want, but I prefer A4. Make sure the orientation is portrait because most posters are in portrait. And also don't worry about these margins just yet. We'll figure them out later. Just press create and it'll take you to this box here and you've got a weird guide in the middle. Ignore that for now. So on my screen, I've got these windows up of character layers, paragraph style, character style and swatches. If you want one of them up, all you have to do is go to window and click on one of these. Anything with a tick next to it means that it's already open on your screen. Now, the first thing that I always do when I'm creating a poster or doing something like this, like an advertising poster, is I go ahead and create guides. Now, these guides are basically gonna compose a grid for me to work on. So the way that we do this is go to layout, create guides, and it'll open up this dialog box here. Now, this is an important dialog box because this allows us to add grid numbers in here very easily and honestly it's easy you don't have to be picking out the guides now what we need to know is the rows columns and then the gutter so the number of rows that we want i'm going to go for 20 this is what i normally do the more guides you have the more areas you can add things in and i'm going to explain it a bit more but for columns I'm going to add 24 just so that we've got more wiggle room and it's not just so asymmetric. Now for the gutter, I always just take it to zero when doing a poster design, but basically a gutter is the space in between the guides. So you want to add a five millimeter space in between the guides so you know that you've got that space all the way through your document. But because we're doing a poster design, we're only using these guides as basically a metronome or a click track to our work. Then you'll start to see all these guides here. Now, these guides can be taken on and off, which is basically just control and semicolon. I want my background color to be the pink purple, which is the InDesign color scheme. So I'm gonna to go to this rectangle over here, and then I'm gonna zoom out a bit, and I'm gonna to go to the top here, and all the way down and create a square. Nothing's happened, so what we need to do is flip the color, because right now we've got no color, and a stroke. So I'm gonna flip them by pressing Shift and X. That's gonna flip it, but it's all black. So double click on this, and then put the input color to this one, which I pre-copied, which is E83B83. That's the hex code. I would suggest now to go to Illustrator because we need a topic for this poster. Now the topic of your poster could be your town, your name, who you are, what you do, or a passion. My topic is abstractation and simple shapes. Adobe provided an asset to me, which is what I use in my original poster, which is this, the 20th anniversary. And I'm gonna be using it in this poster design to show you how I embedded it into the poster. So all these other shapes that you see here are just assets to the design. You can buy assets or you could create them. I normally create these assets based on the topic that I'm about to show people. So for instance, if it was like a gig poster, I would put musical notes in there or guitar strings, or I would use you know sound waves in there. And those would be assets because they conform 
to the context of what we're trying to show. The next stage is imagery. Now, I want to create a sort of abstractation image. So I like abstract art or dripping paint. And I think it's cool to add that fine art medium into the poster. It looks cool. It looks nerdy. I like it. Now, you can use Adobe Stock for these images, but all you need to do is go and search for some images for abstract painting. What I would suggest to do is to create a folder and download them into that folder. The reason why is because InDesign needs to link these assets together for it to work. Otherwise, InDesign doesn't like it when it can't find the image. So I've got all my images placed right here into my document box. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is compose. Now, what I love to do in InDesign is basically use shapes that are simple to get a cool composition. So what I'm gonna do very quickly is just go ahead and create a new layer up here call these shapes now i'm going to start to add some shapes around here i'm going to forget about this pink line there but i'm going to start to add some shapes because i know i like these shapes that we've got going on and i'm going to use the grid now the idea of this grid is that when we use it we keep in line with the grid as much as possible it's kind of like a guide within your work so i know that if i had that there it looks pretty decent all the way around but what I want to do is keep that going all the way across. I want to keep everything within a grid to create this abstractation. Now, obviously, this square isn't going to be a square. It's going to be an image. And the reason why I put a square there is just to block a place there. So we have an image in place for that. What I'm then going to do is basically repeat the process using the guides, creating these outlines like so. There's one there. Making sure things that line up. And this is a really easy way of using the grid tool. And you can experiment or do whatever you want to do with this. It's quite literally up to you how you respond to the design that you're creating. So I've got that there. I want this to be my sort of art style for now. I've got the basic fundamentals of what I want. I'm going to then select all of my shapes and then right click. And we're going to go down to content. What we're doing here is we're selecting a content for the shapes. It could be unassigned and remained as a vector shape if you wanted to. But I know I want this to be a graphic. So I'm going to press graphic. It's going to give you these red lines in the center of it. Now these red lines show me that there's an image that could be dragged into that. So what I'm going to do is get my file browser open. I'm going to import the image that I want into this one by just dragging it in. So now we have some weird looking work there. What can we do with this? Well, easiest thing we can do is go ahead and highlight this and go to our blending options by going to opacity. When we've highlighted this and go to opacity, go from normal and we can go to multiply. And that will create a cool blending mode into this work, which looks kind of cool. Now, all we need to do is repeat the same for these three objects here and any other objects, but I'm just working on this first part down here for now. So in fact, I'm gonna bring this down just one little notch there. I'm gonna bring this up here and bring that up a little notch in line with our work. So instantly, I'm gonna go ahead and use a different image for these things just randomly placing them in for different images because I kind of like the look of them. And we're going to scale all these images down and we can move the images, scale them, do whatever we need. It might take a bit of like getting used to. We'll do the same for this. We can create different textures doing this. This is the coolest part about creating something like this. Okay, I like the look of that. Now again, we can go ahead and play with the blend mode. So just go ahead and highlight those go to the opacity and change the blend mode to something cool like maybe overlay would work maybe not we can't really see it too much maybe c color dodge that could work because it looks white now and looks very interesting so what i could do is keep one on white change the rest maybe go to multiply again to see what that looks like i like multiply as well now i'm going to work on some of the assets of this so all i'm going to do is when i'm in illustrator i'm going to select one of the assets copy it go back to indesign paste it in and we have now got a shape that we can add content to so i could add this shape as a image shape so we could go ahead and bring in i don't know this again and it will match inside of there we do the same we just add to multiply and we've got a shape right there the reason why i create these shapes is because it creates a different element it's easier to do it beforehand so you can experiment with what you have instead of creating these shapes on the fly create them beforehand and have some fun with them and see how you can fit them in i'm also going to bring in my uh, indesign graphic just here so i'm going to bring it in so it's in these corners so we've got a bit of a bleed there so i like the size of that something else i'm I'm going to do is i'm going to start copying this white strip around reason being is because you can create a lot of cool shapes with this i'm going to bring it onto its side we're going to 
create some white strips here and because of the grid we can go ahead and bring this down we've got a cool white shape right there we can bring this out so it fits perfectly within the grid we can bring this out again i'm not going to bring any text into this version of the post i just want to show you how to grid with basic shapes but if you wanted to you can do pretty simply all you have to do is go into Illustrator and outline your text. So all I've done in my assets is basically create this 20 years Adobe, uh, which forms into this little block or a grid, which I kind of enjoy to watch. So I'm going to select this. It's been outlined and I'm going to copy it back in to InDesign. That's been copied back in. We're going to move. We're going to move our graphic here and take this graphic and put it up here and then fit it in within the grid. So using these two lines as the grid. And then the last graphic that I'm going to use that I always sort of use a bit of balance in here is this, which is going to sit just generally up here next to the Adobe InDesign 2020 sign. And the reason why it's going to sit up there is to give some sort of balance here. So it's fitting in with the guides. Everything is working. Now you see these crosses here. Well, we want to go ahead and move them to the right so they fit in with this graphic here. Now there is your basic abstractation poster design. I created this a bit different to the one that I actually created for Adobe, but the way that I created this is super simple and easy and it helps with practicing. It's really nice to experiment. I just want to thank Adobe for sponsoring this video. If you want to go ahead and get Adobe InDesign, then click that link down below. And don't forget to subscribe, like and comment and share this video so you're in it for a chance to win one of these bad boys. Let me know if you want to win one in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you in the next video see you soon goodbye